Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. Although I'm not actually in the corner today, the sun in Arkansas has changed the angle and I had to kind of bring the table out here. Hopefully the sun will shine on the front of these two radios long enough for me to finish this uh, video. You'll recall uh, that the first video I did with the Flip Ultra uh, HD camera was uh, the Atwater Kent 856. Uh, a fellow uh, I have not even met uh, helped me finish this radio. Uh, I work with a fellow named Gary and he has a uh, brother-in-law whose name is Jimmy and uh, one day I called up Gary and I said you know I said Gary do you know anybody that has any veneer I said the front of my uh, Atwater Kent 856 is really messed up I mean I've got it all reef you know repatched and fixed and sanded down and everything but but I need some veneer for the front do you happen to know anybody that might have some so I don't have to spend a fortune uh, going on eBay or whatnot I don't need a small piece. I don't need a big, giant piece to finish this radio. And he said, you know, my brother-in-law used to own a, uh, well, he used to build furniture. And he worked for a guy that built furniture, and then uh, he's no longer in the business, and he, he might have some veneer left over. I said, oh, that's great, you know. I said, well, check with him and let me know. Well, he did. And uh, his brother-in-law's name, like I said, was Jimmy. And uh, Jimmy gave me, gave Gary uh, three pieces of veneer, oh, I'd say about uh, maybe two and a half feet long by uh, maybe a foot and a half wide. He gave me three different kinds. And uh, it was perfect for what I needed, one of them was. And I was able to put it on the front of this uh, Atwater can and finish up the radio. So this is the veneer that Jimmy provided me. And it was, it was very gracious of him to do that. Well, it's now been a couple of years later, and uh, Gary approached me the other day and said, uh, my brother-in-law uh, wants to know if you uh, could repair an old radio that he has that probably belonged to his wife's mother. And I said, and I said well, I guess, you know. I said, how much is he wanting to pay, you know? He said, well, this is the brother-in-law that gave you the veneer. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Payback time, you know. Kind of reminded me of the Godfather, you know, someday I'll come to you for a favor, you know. But that's okay. I don't mind doing it a bit. So I said, you bet you. I said, I owe that man uh, something in return for his generosity on his uh, veneer. You bring that radio on down there, and I'll see what I can do with it. Of course, there's never any promises. You know, you know sometimes you run into something that maybe <clears throat> the, the insides may be completely fried, and there's just no way you can, you can repair it. Well, he brought the radio down, and it turned out to be this Crosley. Uh, this Crosley, it's a nice-looking radio, you know. It's just a square box, but, I mean, they're a rectangular. They're not a whole lot to the cabinet itself, but they did real good on the front design. It looks real nice. And uh, I said, yeah, I think I can do something with that as long as the insides are okay. So <clears throat> I, I did a little research on the radio, and it turns out it's from uh, 1951 or thereabouts. It says pre-1951. It it's one of the earliest AA5 radios, actually. Uh, there's no transformer in it, and it has five tubes. It's uh, the model 11109U, which is significant because there were, uh, there were three other colors uh, in this radio. Uh, the 106U was black, and the 107U was beige, and the uh, 108U was burgundy, which is really a, a nice light. I looked that up on the internet and saw a picture of that burgundy radio. It looks really nice. Anyway, uh, I, this is a Bakelite radio. It is Bakelite, and uh, it's called Hunter Green. I, I really like it. And it was just a straightforward recap job. Uh, a couple, I think I changed out three resistors that were out of tolerance. I shined up the cabinet with uh, what's called Plast-X. Uh, it comes in a little white bottle, and I got it at Walmart, made by McGuire's, I, think, I believe it is. It works really great. I just shined it up. First I washed it, then I gave it a good uh, Plast-X uh, work over, I think three times, which really brought out the gloss. And uh, the Plast-X even uh, shined up the, uh, the gold brass part of this radio. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's just in really good shape now. I had to paint this little needle indicator. I understand this little needle, uh, the uh, indicator needle, uh, it gives people a problem, uh, and I guess they're reproducing them now as reproduction items. The reason being is if you want to remove the chassis from this radio, you have to turn that needle to where it's horizontal. And there's a slot that the needle will go through because the, the needle's actually on the outside of the case, and you can actually touch it with your finger. 
And uh, if you don't move it down to where it's horizontal and it doesn't go through that slot, and then you try to pull out that chassis, you wind up bending and bending the needle straight forward. It'll just mangle it. So they have a warning on the back of the radio that says, do not remove chassis until the needle's in the horizontal position. I'm glad they did that because there's a chance I probably would have bent the, the needle also. Let's take a little closer look at this thing. I really like these uh, large uh, clear plastic knobs. Easy to get a hold of, especially for an older fellow like me. And uh, nice Crosley uh, gold. That's, that's made out of metal uh, right there. So I didn't spare a whole lot of uh, uh, money on, on the cabinet, but they, they, they did on the chassis. But let's take a look around the back of this thing. Right here you'll find a switch on these uh, models. It's a, it's a phonograph and radio switch, which means that you can... Uh, connect your uh, record player into this RCA connector, RCA style connector, and uh, play your, uh, flip this thing to a uh, phono for the record player. This thing's kind of stiff. Let me see if I can get her to move here. I may have to oil that thing. There we go. Okay, anyway, it once you flip it into the phono position, uh, it'll, and turn the radio on, it'll play your records, uh, or anything else, I imagine, that has an RCA style connector. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted you to see this loop antenna on the back of this radio. This is what the chassis looks like, incidentally. It does use the miniature tubes, and, uh, this, this has a really interesting, uh, loop antenna, the way they built it. It's really well done. It's just not a bunch of coils of wire slapped on a cardboard. They put that on there. And then it looks like it's almost integrated into this uh, masonite. Really interesting uh, setup. And of course, this is the back of your your switch right here. And uh, this screw right here uh, enables you to connect uh, to an outside antenna. Uh, it's, it's on the other side here, so you can use either the uh, the loop or uh, connect a wire to this right here. Your schedule. You know, that's one of the things I always ask. Do, do, in skating, it's degree of difficulty. That's what Jesus learned when he went to Calvary. He learned it. And that, and that day of Pentecost. We have seen so many rhinos over the years. Unless America discovers its roots. Uh, it has no tone control. It just has the on-off and volume and the tuner. Like I said, not that sophisticated, but a nice little radio, you know, um, as far as the design I, I and functionality goes. I think you're right, goes. though. A lot of these things are going to be very difficult. This radio will be going back to Jimmy, or back to Gary, uh, when I take it to work today, and he'll give it to his uh, brother-in-law, Jimmy. So, Jimmy, if you're watching this uh, video, and I understand you're pretty good on the computer, according to Gary, this is your radio. It plays very nicely. From the corner on the deck, glad you stopped in. This is John.